the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine Visual Pearl Series. We will be discussing the paravertebral nerve block. The paravertebral nerve block is an effective block for acute and chronic pain of the chest and upper abdomen. Local anesthetic is injected into the space adjacent to the vertebra to block the spinal nerves. Our local anesthetic will block the somatic and sympathetic nerves that occupy the paravertebral space. The local anesthetic will also spread to the intercostal space laterally and the epidural space medially. The thoracic paravertebral nerve block can be used unilaterally, bilaterally, with single injection technique, or via catheter. Indications for the paravertebral nerve block include surgeries of the thorax and upper abdomen. Here are the contraindications to the paravertebral nerve block. Bleeding disorders and coagulopathy are relative contraindications. We can achieve large analgesics spread from T1 to T7. Typically, 20 milliliters of local anesthetic are injected at a single site, say T3, or multiple injections are given with smaller volumes. Be careful to avoid last. So what nerves are we blocking? We are blocking the intercostal nerves as they exit the spinal cord. The paravertebral nerve block is a more proximal and deeper version of the intercostal nerve block. The paravertebral space is a portal to the ventral and dorsal spinal rami and the epidural spaces. Our target is the paravertebral space. Note the costotransverse ligament and the internal intercostal membrane form a boundary together. We can see that the paravertebral space is like a house in which the roof is the external and internal intercostal membranes and the floor is the pleura. This is a house without walls, so when we inject local anesthetic, it is free to flow between spaces. Patients can be positioned supine or prone. This is the parasagittal view and technique. Needle tip visualization is very important. Careful hydrodissection technique is needed. The paravertebral space is reached when the pleural lining will drop. The transversal plane approach Using your linear probe, identify your transverse process and rib, slide your probe downward, find an unobstructed pathway to the paravertebral space. This is the oblique sagittal plane approach. Rotate your linear probe, identify your transverse process and rib. Find an unobstructed pathway to the paravertebral space. Scan to see the local anesthetic spread over several vertebral levels. A single injection of 20 cc's should cover four to five vertebral levels. Why does the pleura drop? When we inject local anesthetic, we are separating the parietal pleura from the endothoracic fascia. Here is the separation on a cadaver. Here is a video of a paravertebral nerve block showing successful dropping of the pleura.
For a novice, the simplest approach to image the paravertebral space is to use the parasagittal approach. Use the linear transducer to visualize the transverse process and pleura. Consider a needle guide. An out-of-plane approach is recommended only to those that have prior experience with out-of-plane techniques from other blocks. Many skilled practitioners use the in-plane transversal and oblique technique. It requires more practice to obtain a good view of the transverse process and other structures. There is a risk for epidural placement of needle, catheter, and local anesthetic spread. Here is another video of a successful paravertebral nerve block with depression of the pleura. Here are articles on the paravertebral nerve block. We have also used videos from the following sources. From the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine, we thank you for your time and attention.